Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Welcome to Prague Chattery 777. We've been talking about Jethro Tull and Ian Anderson, and we've made it to the 21st century. Uh, 2003, to be precise, this is the fourth album by Ian Anderson, solo album, it's called Rupees Dance. Um... I, just, I, I may have a bit of reservations on this one. It's not that I dislike it. There's a lot of great stuff on it. Um, but I think I like Secret Language of Birds quite a bit better. Um, again, I can't really place why. I mean, I think that there's a lot of strong material on this album. Uh, I don't know. It, it, it's maybe, maybe I'm just not as familiar with it. I, this is one of the more recent albums that I picked up. Uh, I haven't spent quite as much time, I got it maybe, like, probably a year or so ago, but I haven't spent quite as much time with this one as I have with some of the other songs, or with some of the other albums. Uh, so that might be why. Um, you could you could call this a, a direct follow-up to Secret Language of Birds. Um, it is very much in the acoustic setting still, um, but it's heavier than Secret Language of Birds. I think there's more kind of heavy band tracks. There's more electric guitar on this album than there is on Secret Language. Um, but it's it's not quite as heavy as Tall Music. You know, th this album kind of sits somewhere between Dot Com and, and Secret Language of Birds, I think. Um, although we don't have any, there's no Martin Barr on here. Uh, the bonus track, there's we get a bonus track, which is a teaser for the Christmas album. Martin Barr is on that, of course. But uh, the main album of songs, we don't get any Martin Barr, which is uh, is very unusual. He guessed it on a couple of songs in the previous album, but he's not on anything on here. Uh, so yeah, you know, basically we we kind of get. Something of a repeat of, uh, of Secret Language of Birds, but like I said, there's more arrangements to it. Maybe arguably heavier, there's more electric guitar, but the, the lead instrument is certainly still Ian's acoustic. Um, so it is kind of a development from Secret Language of Birds. I think Secret Language just wins for me because it came first, you know? <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the lineup is uh, generally kind of a shifting array of characters. Um, like I said, I don't think he ever intended to tour this with a band. I think some of the songs, uh, I'm sure, would have come up uh, uh, on Jethro Tull tours that went on through the 2000s. Uh, but yeah, you know, quite a lot of this album, I think, is, is just Ian Anderson, you know, playing with himself. David Goodyear, uh, who would later join Anderson's touring band, uh, he plays some bass on it. Uh, um, I think there are a few string quartets on here. There's one on one of the songs, anyway. Um, yeah, so let's, let's start talking about the tracks. Like I said, it's, it's uh, you know, I, I feel it's less essential than the previous album, um, but that might just be that I haven't heard it enough. Uh, I've, I've listened to it many, many times. It's just, uh, there's, I feel this one's a little bit more removed from some of the other ones. Uh, so anyway, without f any further ado, the album opens up with uh, track one, Caliandra Shade. The Cappuccino Song. Um, it's about time Ian Anderson wrote a song about coffee shops. <laughs> it sounds like a pretty an Ian Anderson kind of a topic. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's a good song. Um, I think I like, again, I like the opener for the previous album more, but uh, we get a nice little uh, flute theme that opens up. Da -da 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 Quite cheery. Although there is a bit of a darkness to it, funnily enough. For a song about cappuccinos... Um, yeah, maybe, maybe maybe there's just a nostalgia that kind of winds its way through the the verses, um, but it, there there is a, a very a slight tinge of darkness, sadness perhaps. Um, but I think I, on the whole, I think this song is there's more arrangements on this song than there are on some of the songs in the previous album. But it's still essentially an acoustic song. Um, I love that. Great little bits of uh, instrumental stuff, and there is there is a certain drama when those slightly melancholy verses come in. Uh, when, yeah, so it, it's it's a good song. Caliandra Shea. This, this was played live a fair bit, I think. Uh, track two, we get the title track, Rupees Dance. Uh, this is one of my one of my uh, one of the songs I like more on the album. I think this is uh, Anderson doing his his uh, classic uh, folk thing. Uh, and obviously he's at this point he's not just limited to the kind of Celtic flavorings or the the early flavorings you know he's also there's a bit of that Indian influence coming in as well but uh, Rupi's dance is, is is lots of fun uh, I, I love the part where uh, you know the, the the instrumental bit kind of wraps up and we've got a all right <laughs> when he go before he goes into the the final verse quite nice like a yes, nice little bit of Ian Anderson folk stuff uh, track three, uh, this is probably a contender for one of the best songs on the album, I would think, uh, Lost in Crowds. Um, 
probably closer to a Jethro Tull song, uh, to be honest. But again, you know, Ian Anderson and Jethro Tull are kind of synonymous, you know. When you talk about Jethro Tull, you're talking about the words and music of Ian Anderson. Um, but Lost in Crowds is uh, it's one of the heavier songs on the album. we got we got a few moments of uh, big electric guitar. It might even be Anderson playing the electric guitar on there. It might be... Uh, that might be him. Let me just check. Let me just check. Nope, it's not. Somebody else. Uh, his name is... O.C. Schaller did the guitar work on that. But yeah, the, the, big, the big chorus that pops up in Lost in Crowds. Um, so who am I? Go on, ask me I dare you. I think that's the line. Um, it's really good. Uh, it's talking about social anxieties and whatnot. But there's a, there's a great uh, bit of dynamics between the quiet verses and the big heavy choruses. And a uh, nice little instrumental section in there as well. Um, so yeah, that, that's probably a contender for one of the best songs on the album. I don't think it would have fit, fit well on Secret Language of Birds. I think it's, it's more appropriate to this one. Like I said, there's a little bit more arrangement. It's a bit heavier, a bit more rocky, but still basically an acoustic album. Uh, so yeah, track three, Lost in Crowds. Good one. Track four, tracks four, five, and six uh, are three songs or a something of somethings. Um, I'm not sure if that's conceptually linked. I mean, when I listen to the album, it, they, they still sound like separate songs that, you know, they just happen to have that funny title. Uh, but the first of those three, track four, is A Raft of Penguins. Um, this one, this one's, you know, pretty good. I mean, again, some of these songs, you know, even, even though we still have the richness and, uh, you know, all that, all the melodies that we had in the previous album, there's something about, they don't stick in my head quite as long. Um, but, uh... You know, they're, 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 these are some these are some good songs. I think Raft of Penguins has, has some really nice uh, orchestral bits to it. Um, obviously, a little more subdued than Lost in Crowds, but um, still quite good. Um, a Week of Moments almost has a, kind of a Latin flavor to it. Some of the South American influences, uh, just to the rhythm, um, and that, that's a pretty good song. Uh, none of these three are my favorites on the album, to be honest, but they're okay. Uh, and A Hand of Thumbs again, it, it's a song that. Uh, it kind of escapes me. I, I, I listened to it less than an hour ago, and I, I kind of, I, I'm having trouble placing it, placing where it, where it comes. Um, so sorry about that. Gosh, I should be, I should be doing it. I should be, I should know these albums better. I don't know them well enough. Gosh, sorry everybody. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, the, the, the four tracks four, five, and six are they're just kind of songs. They're just a, a, you know three three Ian Anderson songs, but not as strong as the first three on the album. Uh, but that's okay, we get to track seven, which is Urology. Uh, first of two instrumentals on the album, and I really, really like this. Uh, this is a melody that sticks with me. Uh, I, I, it's, it's, it's very European, obviously. Um, you yeah, know, the melody is played on the flute, obviously. Uh, but it's, it's really good, it's very joyful. It, there, there, there's some weird time signatures in there, but the melody itself is, is just such a joy to listen to. Um, very engaging little instrumental, and uh, it's good to see that he was he was more into writing these instrumentals now. Maybe that was just that, uh, you know, he had this this greater dexterity on the flute since relearning it in the early '90s. That he was more into playing, uh, writing, and playing these instrumentals. And uh, Urology, I think, is a great example. Great little song. And then we get to track eight. This might be one of my favorites on the album. Um, again, we're we're very much in the the vibe of uh, Ian Anderson solo acoustic stuff um and it's a sad song really uh it, it's about uh it's about his old black cat that passed away true story i guess yeah, it's, uh, i should think I said he wrote the song in the hours after after he had to put it down it was sick with something and it was an old black cat he lived a long life perhaps that's the black cat right there maybe that's him um, but it, it's a sweet song, you know, there, there's some, there's some lovely lines in there, you know, he, he was bad, or he, he wasn't good, but he wasn't bad, um, yeah, some, some of those lines really, they, they, they really tug at the heartstrings if you're, if you're a cat lover, you know, as, uh, talking about how he, uh, was hoping he'd make it to Chris, or hoping he'd make it to your New Year's, but instead he, he ended up with this song, hmm, so yeah, I really like Old Black Cat, really good stuff. Uh, track nine, Photoshop, uh, this is a, this is a good one too, this is, uh, Kind of reminds me of the Water Carrier from the previous album. Uh, we get some of that fast strumming. Um, yeah, it, it's really good. You know, again, I, I think Water Carrier is probably the better one because it, it came first, right? But uh, uh, it's it's a good song. It's okay. Uh, track ten is Pigeon Flying Over Berlin Zoo. This one is one of the one of the more rocky ones. I think a, a bigger arrangement to it. Uh, and this is another really sad one if you're a big animal lover too. He's talking about. Um, 
you know, a pigeon flying over the zoo looking at all the caged animals. And uh, one, of those re- one of those really ga- great songs by Anderson where he, uh, you know, he takes, he takes a situation or he takes, uh, he takes something and he, he gives a really nice objective overview of it. So, uh, you know, on one hand, the pigeon's flying over the zoo looking at the animals thinking, oh, they're, they're, they're locked up and they're safe. They're, they're, they're safe from the wrath of the world outside. But then the, the animals look at the, the pigeon flying over and they're looking at freedom. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's a, ultimately, I think it's a sad song. I don't, I don't think it, you know, I'm not one to totally endorse Sue's all the time. Um, but yeah, this song really puts that issue into perspective. You know, what do the, what do the, what do the other animals think when they see a free animal fly overhead? Uh, yeah. Any arrangement, like I said, it's one of the more full band pieces. There's more, you know, a fuller arrangement to it, uh, which is cool. Uh, then we get track 11, uh, the second of the two instrumentals, Griminelli's Lament. Um, this is this one's a little bit more low key. It's a little less energy than Urology, but it's still good. Um, it's a shorter one, like about three minutes long. It's kind of the average length for his instrumentals, I guess. But uh, yeah, it's good. Um, I I like it a little less than the uh, Urology. Like I said, it's got there's a little less energy to it, but uh, hey, it's fun. Uh, track twelve, not Relitza Vasavila. I think that's how you pronounce it. I, again. Um, I, I, I just heard the song. I should know how to pronounce her name. Um, I, I quite like this one, actually. Again, it's, it's got a, kind of got a bigger arrangement. We're talking about, um, like in, in this day and age, too, talking about CNN and uh, certain discrepancies with, within major media. Blah, 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 blah. Um, but I, I love the chorus. I like... Um, CNN in America. I love that vocal line. There's, there's some great. It's not really a tongue twister, but the way that his, his tongue bounces off those uh, those words is really cool. Um, so yeah, that, that's that's a nice little highlight towards the end of the album. And uh, the album proper ends with track 13, which is two short planks. Um, yeah, again, uh, kind of typical Anderson folky stuff. It has it has the bigger arrangement to it. Um, you know, bigger than some of the stuff on Secret Language of Birds, I think. Uh, but I really like it. I think it's got a nice chorus. It's got a nice hook to it. It's um, you know a very happy song. A nice a nice happy thing to wind the wind the album up with. Uh, and that that's it. That's that's the main album. That is Rupee's Dance. Uh, of course, it came with a bonus track, Birthday Card at Christmas, which uh, of course opened the Jethro Tull Christmas album, which was released later this year. Um, and that that's a very good song. A good song about uh, all those poor souls that are are born right within a gnat's whisker of Christmas, as he puts it in the liner notes. Um, yeah, I, I quite like Birthday Card at Christmas. Uh, again, it's not really a part of this album per se, but you know, it's the bonus track. It was a little bit of promo to try and get people to get out and buy the Christmas album. Um, so yeah, on, on the whole, I I think this album is a little bit weaker than what what we had before. Uh, it's kind of it's it's a it's a, it's a, it's like Star Trek: The Next Generation. If the if the original one was Secret Language of Birds, you know this one is good, but it's not quite the same. Um, even though he does expand the arrangements and there's a little more band kind of playing rather than you know the acoustic setting, the acoustic band that we have in the previous album. Um, you know it's it's got some great moments on it, but it doesn't quite cut the mustard for me personally. Um, but there's some great tracks on there. I, I love I love the title track. I love. Uh, I really love Old Black Cat. Urology is a great instrumental. Lost in Crowds is a great track. So you know, there's there's still lots of worth mo- worthwhile material. I hesitate to call this um, essential though. Between the two, I think you're better off getting uh, Secret Language of Birds. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Just do the do the exact opposite if uh, if you think. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, there's a huge huge gap after this. Um, obviously, Jethro Tull was still an entity at this point. We're talking 2003. Um, but they, they, aside from the Christmas album, which is all freshly recorded, um, but it's only half new material, and it, it's kind of outside of the canon, you know, I, I'll i probably talk about it one day, but not right away, I, I'm not, you know, I'll, I'll do, I'll do the Christmas album one day, how's that sound? Uh, unless you comment, and you, you really, really want me to talk about the Christmas album, then I'll do it. Um, so we'll, I'll leave that up to you. Uh, but yeah, um, you know, Jethro told the band existed as a touring entity, I think, up until 2011. I think that was the last time they toured with the name Jethro Tull. Um, and sadly, you know, they, they never they never really... I'm sure they wrote new material, but they never recorded any of it. Um, 
So this is, in a lot of ways, I'm sure for a long time, people thought this was kind of the last statement from Ian Anderson, the songwriter, uh, which would have been a great shame. Um... And yeah, I mean, it's certainly, you know, when I got into Jethro Tull, you know, you know I was only 12 years old when this came out. Um, so when I got into Jethro Tull, you know, I kind of had this, oh yeah, well, Dot Com was the last Tull album, and there's a couple of Anderson records, and then that's just kind of it. Wasn't I under, wasn't I in for a great surprise in 2012 when Ian Anderson would would announce the release of Thick as a Brick 2? Um, obviously it was released as an Ian Anderson record and they kind of retired the name Jethro Tull, but all this is going to be talked about next time in much greater detail when I talk about Tab 2, Thick as a Brick 2, released in 2012. So stick around for that. Thank you for watching. Thank you for uh, putting up with my rambles. Um, comment in the box below. Um, send me a like, send me a subscribe, and we will see you all later for Tab 2. Thanks again, everyone, and we'll see you in the future.